Chapter 32. There are two chapters left. It's Monday, so I have to return to school today. The temperature has dropped and the sun is glowing like some kind of frosted golden jewel. Yet everything feels different and not right. Mom spent the weekend at the hospital with Penny, sleeping on a cot in her room. I have not seen her since, well, since everything changed. I'm wondering if my mom is mad at me. When Mrs. V comes over and helps me get dressed and fed, even Butterscotch seems to miss Penny being home. She puts her head in my lap and looks at me with lonely eyes. I can't even help her. Dad is a mess. He keeps dropping things like forks and keys. He starts to talk and then forgets what he was going to say. He hasn't shaved. Go ahead. Get yourself together, Chuck, Mrs. B says. Take a hot shower, drink a cold glass of orange juice, and it will do you wonders. When you go see Penny this morning, you don't want to scare her, do you? Yeah, you're right, my dad replies. You've got Melody covered? I'll see that she gets on the bus. Now, you scoot. He bounds up the stairs to the bathroom. I type out on my board, Penny better? Yes. When I spoke to your mom this morning, she told me they took her off her IV already. Penny was eating applesauce and complaining about her cast and asking for doodle, which I have all cleaned up and ready for her. Penny is going to be just fine, Melody, just fine. I inhale deeply. Mrs. V spoons eggs into my mouth, but my stomach is still worrying. Her leg, I ask. Her leg is in a cast. It's big and clunky, and it's going to annoy her. But doctors have said when she is stronger, she'll even be able to walk with it. I'm glad Mrs. V is always honest with me. Wheelchair? I can't think of anything worse than a tiny baby wheelchair. No, no, they want her to move around as much as possible. I take a big sigh of relief. Her head, I finally ask. Mrs. V understands. There's no brain damage, Melody, none. I exhale slowly. You sure? I type out. Absolutely. I saw her myself last night. She did bump her head when she fell, but the car hit her leg. It didn't hit her head at all. The school bus was honking, and Mrs. V wheeled me down the drive to meet it. She checked my backpack, adjusted my foot straps, and gave me a big hug. Are you ready, Melody? Are you ready to face the quiz team? I nod. Nod. After what almost happened, facing a bunch of snotty fifth graders is going to be easy. Gus looks at me with concern as he lowers the bus. How's your little sister? He asks me. That was so scary. I she's going to be okay, I type. Thank you. I realize right then that news travels fast. Everybody at school is probably going to know as well. Gus wheels me onto the lift and pushes the button to raise it while I wave goodbye to Mrs. V. The ride to school is strangely quiet, not the usual squeaks and grunts from the students who ride my special bus. When we get to school, the air is chilly, so the aides take us directly to room H5. As we get settled, I look at my friends with different eyes. Freddie wants to zoom, zoom, zoom. Ashley, the fashion model. Willie, my baseball expert. Maria, who has no enemies. Gloria, the music lover. Carl, our resident gourmet. Jill, who might once have been just like Penny. Not one of them knows how to be mean. And me, the dreamer, who just wants to escape room H5. A kid with a computer named Elvira. I don't even know where do I belong anymore. Catherine comes in then wearing a new outfit that's actually cute and stylish. Tan slacks, black sweater, and a vest. Nice outfit, I tell her. Thanks, I put it together myself. I have something for you. I point to my book bag. She reaches into my bag, digs around, and finds a card. Finds the card that almost led to Penny's tragedy. After she reads it, she's fighting back tears. No, Melody, she says. Thank you. She leans over and hugs me and looks at me all serious and says, Mrs. Valencia called me and told me all about what happened to your sister. How is she? Better, I type. You know, Catherine said, you probably saved her life. What? Seriously, your screaming and yelling slowed your mom down. It gave her time to figure out why you were acting like you had hot potatoes in your pants. I could not stop mom, I type out on my machine. You did the right thing, and I am so proud of you. Really? Really? Especially after you all you had been through the day before at the airport. Do you want to talk about that? No, I type and look away.
Maria comes over to me and gives me a big hug. You did good, Melly Belly. Good. I'm not sure if she's talking about the quiz team or something else, but my eyes suddenly are all drippy and my nose is starting to run. I just wish I could give her a big squeeze back and let her know how good she has made me feel. But I just type. Thanks. I'm never sure how much Freddy is really aware of what's going on around him, but he surprises me when he zips over and say, Melly, go zoom in a plane. He looks excited and even a little envious. No, Freddy, no plane, no zoom. His face scrunches up into sadness and he drives his wheelchair away. Mrs. Shannon comes over next and squats next to me. Your head must be near about ready to explode from all that has happened to you in the past few days. Boom, I type. But I don't feel like smiling. Let's talk at lunch. Okay, Melody? Okay. Are you going to your inclusion classes today, she asks. Yes, I tap. I had been thinking about this all weekend, which when I wasn't thinking about Penny, and I had decided I was not going to hide. I want you to know I'm very proud of you. She gave me a big hugs up and then gets our morning routine going. As it turns out, Miss Gordon is absent today, so the first inclusion class that I'm going to attend is Mr. Demings. Are you sure you want to go? Catherine asked me, but instead of answering, I power my chair toward the door. Catherine rests her hand on my shoulder as I whiz in. A small brass-colored trophy is sitting on Mr. D's desk, and the room is quieter than usual. Mr. Deming clears his throat. He shifts from one foot to the other. He runs his finger around the collar of his white shirt. He's back to his old, well-worn brown suit. His old shoes as well. Finally, he says with his voice sounding fake cheerful, Hello, Melody. I do not even reply. He wiggles so much he looks like he has to go to the bathroom. I just watch him. No kicks, no weird sounds. I'm amazingly calm. I glance over at Rose, but she's looking the other direction. No one seems to know what to say. At last, I break the silence. I turn up the volume loud on my machine and type, Why did you leave me? Somebody should have been there with a video camera proving that, yes, a fifth grade classroom can be completely quiet. Faces look at their faces, each one hoping the other will speak. Eventually, Rose stands up and looks directly at me and says, We didn't plan to leave you, Melody. It's honest. I look her right in the eyes and I wait. I don't react. I just wait. We all went out to breakfast that morning, she continues, but I interrupt her. Nobody told me. How come? None of them can answer. Their silence say what their words can't. It's better without me. I'm blinking fast. Claire finally stammers, we figured you would slow us down because you have to be fed and stuff. It's so quiet I can hear my own heartbeat. You threw up at the restaurant and no one left you, I reply. Ooh, I hear Rodney whisper. Claire is staring down at her desk. So, who took my place, I ask. Claire lifts her hand, but she still won't look at me. Rose scrapes at the spot on her history book. We finished breakfast early because we were all excited. We got to the airport extra early. Connor stands up then. He's looking very uncomfortable. So when we got to the airport, they told us about the flight that had been canceled, but we could get the next, the early flight if we hurried. Molly speaks. So we checked our stuff quick, and I mean rushed like track stars. Even Mr. Deming had to run to the gate to get to the early flight. I ask, no one thought about me? There was silence. Finally, Rodney said, I did. I was the first one to board the plane, and just as I was giving my boarding pass to the agent, I reminded Mr. Deming you were missing. Mr. Deming is again tw twisting from one foot to the other. I was so busy trying to count heads and check seats and deal with everyone's carry-on. I asked the kids to call you. I knew Rose at least had your number in her cell phone. All eyes look at Rose. She looks at the floor, and then slowly she looks at me, and a tear runs down her cheek. You wouldn't have made it there in time anyways. I picked up my phone to call you. I opened it and I looked at the rest of the kids on the team. She pauses. I could just imagine them standing there thinking about their chance to be on Good Morning America with a huge trophy and me. Rose says in a whisper, we looked at each other and each one of us made a tiny head shake for no, all of them? I'm so sad. Rose sniffles and whispers finally, so I closed my phone and we got on the plane. I never called. 
I wondered, how can silence be so loud? Mr. Deming says very quietly, I am so sorry, Melody, so sorry. Rose bursts into tears and puts her head down on her desk. Just before the competition, Molly explains, a reporter from the Washington Post came to interview the team. When he found out you weren't there, he just left. Connor walked up to the front of the room, picks up the ninth place trophy and brings it to me. He stammers and licks his lips. Uh, the team wants you to have this, Melody, to make up. He places it on my tray. The trophy is small, made of cheap plastic that's been painted to look like metal. The name of our school is even spelled wrong. I look at the ugly little t statue and start to giggle, and then I crack up, and finally I'm rolling with laughter. My hand jerks out, hits the trophy. I don't know if it was an accident or not, and it falls to the floor and broke into several pieces. The class stares at me surprised. When they see I'm not going ballistic, they finally start to laugh a little. Even Rose sniffs and smiles. I don't want it, I type. Then turning up the volume as loud as it would go, I added, you earned it. Still laughing, I roll, I click the power to my chair, do a smooth turn, and I roll myself right out of the classroom.